morning, everyone. May God bless you and keep you on this beautiful morning. Uh, here in Atlanta, Georgia, it's a very beautiful morning. A nice spring, springtime weather. Uh, a few minutes late. Uh, just was so blessed this past weekend to uh, was chosen by a group of friends to to run 120 miles. So a little bit tired today, but uh, glory be to God. I know that it's only because of Him that I'm able to stand. It's only because of Him that I'm able to to do uh, to do the will of God. Right? And I know it's because of him, and the title of our message today is because we have a God who serves us in our youth and in our old age, or as we get older. He is the same God. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear Lord, I want to thank you for allowing us to come together once again as men, women, and children of Christ, knowing that it's only because of you that we're able to stand once again today to proclaim that you are the Messiah, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. And that you are the creator of all this, the trees and the blue skies and the birds that are singing. Bless us and keep us on this day, for it is no, we know that it's only because of you that we are here. And Lord, we will be careful at all times to give you all the glory, honor, and praise. And it is in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Today we're going to come out of the book of Psalm, the 71st chapter, verses 1 through 5. And we're pretty much going to talk about this God, the God of all ages, right? God is great. He is the God of all ages. And we can never forget who he is and what he has done for what he continues to do for us each and every moment of the day. For God has done great things for them, and he's done great things for all of us. There is beauty, beauty in these ashes, as Isaiah says, in serving and being in the presence of this great God. He is one who loves our service to others because this is what he instructed us to do while he was yet here on earth that was, those were his instructions that was the template of christianity the template of just uh, of, of, of being a servant of god right whether a believer or unbeliever hopefully a believer that the good things that you do are all because of god and not because of self he is the one who appreciates us when we pray and uplift others others he smiles and he winks, right? When we admonish others in his absence, when we care for others while, while he is absent. Because as I stated, he gave us the template, he gave us the blueprint for loving and serving others. That's the type of God we serve. He is a great God, he, and he is the God of all ages. He is the one who creates, uh, appreciates us, right? He, he smiles and weeps when we admonish others, right? We, he winks and nods because that is when, uh, you know, what we do and, and, and if we were still here and yet his teachings, his profound grace and mercy paid off. And with that, we have the Holy Spirit now with us to instruct us and to guide us through the winking and the nods of God, right? Through creation, right? Through the love that he shared for those who were in need while he was still here on earth. How he raised those that were dead to life, right? How he healed those that were that, that were sick with different afflictions. How he cast out demons in the name of God, right? How he uh, instructed that blind men would see those who were even born with their blindness or other uh, affirmities. He blessed them and kept them. And so now we have this blueprint for love and appreciation and forgiveness because that's who God is. And it's only because of his profound grace and mercy it just paid off. And with that, we have the Holy Spirit now with us. Gave us another gift. Didn't have to, right? Died for us, rose again on the third day, and then said, I'm going to give you another gift to assure that my protection is always with you in your youth and as you get older in life, knowing that I have not left you and will never leave you nor forsake you. Psalm 71 is one of those psalms that uh, where we have an anonymous writer, right? Many books of the psalms are wrote, are, were written by Korah. Uh, or were written by David. But this particular psalm is one that was, uh, it's an anonymous person, it's an anonymous individual who wrote this. It could have been Moses. I mean, we don't know who wrote this, this psalm. But we do know that it is profound and it means so much to each and every one of us if we open up our hearts to try to understand it. Hmm. What we do know is that this particular psalm speaks directly at the hearts and the minds of all people, right? And we're gonna read that right now. Psalm 71, right? It's about uh, this the same protection that we needed in God from our youth is the same love and protection we need now as we grow older in Christ Jesus. Amen. So Psalm 71, verses 1 through 5, and it reads, In thee, Lord, O Lord, do I put my trust, and let me never be put to confusion. Deliver me in thy righteousness and cause me to escape 
Incline thine ear unto me and save me. Be my strong habitation, whereunto I may continually resort. Thou hast given commandment to save me, for thou art my rock and my fortress. Deliver me, O God, out of the hand of the wicked, hmm. out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel man. Right? For you are my hope, O Lord God. Thou art my trust from my youth. Now, different commentaries will state also, right, since we don't know the writer of this particular psalm, but some uh, commentaries are stating that this might have been written by an elderly, an elderly man that was in captivity during the 70 years of captivity while in Babylon, and then even after the Persians took over. As you know, we've been in the book of Esther for a very long time. We took a short break for a few weeks, but we'll get back into it and conclude it. But what is happening is this individual, this elderly man, knew of God. He knew of the powers of God, probably resided in Jerusalem during the time of the great temple and, and great, all great things were going on in Jerusalem until Babylon came in and took over uh, all of Jerusalem, right, and destroyed it. So he remembers as a youth the goodness of God, how good God had been to his family, his community, to his nation, right? And so now that he's an elderly man, he's asking God in this particular psalm, will you continue to bless these people, bless the youth now that I'm an old man, bless the youth the same way that you bless me? Will that same protection reside uh, with the youth and will it reside with me as I grow older in the name of God? So the psalmist is saying that clearly through God, you and I have the upper hand. Those who believe in God, Christ, the Holy Spirit, right? the deity right of God we, we have the assurance of a God who can provide strength when we are weak and he can make a way for us to escape from the wrath of evil men is what Psalm 71 is talking about Lord will you continue to protect me as I grow older as the youth continue to search you out right be not far from their face be not far from helping them be not far from protecting them when they are in need amen this is the God we serve. And because we have no power, right? Because we have no power, right? It is only because of God and the Holy Spirit that He that rests within us that we are able to continue to keep moving forward. So verse, four, verse one, in you, God, I put my trust and never let me put be put to confusion. Meaning never let me get beside myself, thinking I can capture the events of life and death under my own power and strength, because you cannot. Because we have no power, as I stated, it is only through Christ that we now have power to hear, power to see, power to forgive, power of remembrance, power uh, to persevere with, until things actually get better in our lives. So we have the power of patience, right? He goes on to say that through us and our own decisions, we become confused. Mm. Or we choose to walk away from a God who loves us and, and we try to solve the issues of life on our own. Lord, let us not fall into confusion from our youth into our old age. Meaning, let us not go to the right or to the left, but let us keep moving forward in God and in Christ Jesus as we move forward in life, knowing that it's the same God that took us from our mother's womb will be with us until our dying days when they place us in a tomb. For we know that it is God that is with us at all times. Mm. We have no power. Mm. So here we go. Lord, let us not fall into confusion from our youth into our old age. Right? God does not relinquish his power from the youth to old age. What he does is he continues to bless us. If it's a hundredfold, it can, it'll be a hundredfold at age one, and it'll be a hundredfold at age 99. It's the same God. And we bear testament to that when we think about Abraham, how Abraham uh, waited on the promises of God. And it's only because of Abraham that all of us are have the, the promise and the gift of God, gift of life through Jesus Christ, through the seed of Abraham, because of the sacrifices that Abraham made at an old age through Sarah. And they had Isaac. Amen. The son of the promise. Get that. Hmm. So David tells us in Psalm 34, I sought the Lord and he answered me and he delivered me from all my fears. David providing us with the recipe for healthy living. To just seek God, call upon him, wait for a response. And he found a way to deliver me from the doubts of life, the lack of faith, and the unknown. David captured what we should be thinking about 
tomorrow night, right? A deliverer from the fears and the unknowns of tomorrow. We sometimes fret about what tomorrow will bring, but we do know that God has sustained us from our youth to our current age today, whether you're five years old or 50 years old or 100 years old, that is God still looking out for you, providing for you each and every moment of the day, telling us not to worry. He tells us in the book of Matthew to consider, uh, you know, the, the birds of the air, you know, that they don't worry for anything. They don't sow or reap, but yet our Heavenly Father provides for them. And that's what he is seeking in us today. Hmm. It is up to us in verse 2 that our prayers are not idle prayers, right? But prayers that have substance and meaning. That we are meaningful in our prayers. That we're, that we're, that we're praying in supplication. That means praying earnestly, praying at all times for a God who will deliver us, right? That we in our prayers are asking for the protection, the constant protection of God. We mean it, right? We, we, we mean it and we rely on the faith stored in us to make it through these difficult situations. Paul tells us in, in Romans 38, he says, Paul assures us of the love of God that has been told and given to him through Christ Jesus. Let us lean in and, and really pay attention to the God we serve. And this is what Paul says through Christ Jesus. He says, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, and nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Paul is convinced that there is nothing on this earth, all these things that will soon pass away, that will separate him, even angels, that will separate him from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, right? How many people know of someone who would go and die for them on a cross, right? Think about that. Verse three, be my strong habitation, whereunto I may continually resort. Thou hast given commandment to save me, for thou art my rock and my fortress. God is the habitation of his people, is what he's saying, who finds rest and safety in him, right? Justice and judgment are the habitation of God's throne. Hmm. Because all his acts are founded on justice and judgment. God inhabits eternity, right? Dwells not only in men, but in eternity, where time is unknown and the praises of all things, right, are unnoticed, right? Go unnoticed, right? Because we live in the visible right now, but God dwells in the spirit, which is the invisible things that we are trying to obtain as long as we remain in our youth and even in our old age as we continue to, to, to uh, digress through this world, move through this world. Hmm. He dwells among us, right? And those praises, and, and he continually surrounds us, right, with his love and his presence. So whether in our youth or we are now old, right, than we, older than we used to be, that we should try to continue to seek peace and the assurance that your relationship and your communication and the prayers and responses from God never fail. Hmm. Verse four, deliver me, O my God, out of the hand of the wicked, out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel man. For we know this world belongs to Satan. Right? He, is the, he is the tempter. He is the one who is trying to deceive us. He is a liar. He's a cheater. He's trying to destroy uh, and take as many people to hell with him as he possibly can. For he is jealous and he knows that his time is at hand. I believe Mark tells us as as Christ uh, 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 releases the man out of bondage who had been cutting himself and living in tombs, right? That he ran to Jesus and called him the Son of God. He said, are you here to torment me before the time? That means, are you here to destroy me before the time that I think you're going to be here, even though I don't know that, but are you? is it time already for you to destroy me? Hmm. So deliver me from this righteous, this unrighteous and cruel man. Right? And I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked, right? Jeremiah 15 and 21 says, And I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked, and I will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible. So Old Testament to New Testament, whether young or old, Jeremiah being a much older preacher at that time, is saying, you know, uh, please deliver me out of the hand of the unrighteous, right? Those who don't believe in a saving God, for we were in this captivity, now we've come out of this captivity, so let all the 
the youth and the old as we return back to Jerusalem begin to understand about the power of God and how much he loves us. Mm. So during the times of Jeremiah was a time when the Lord came and to the prophets and, and those that he anointed to do God's will. So that same relationship he had with Jeremiah who has a twofold relationship, right? A much heavier relationship with us than he did with Jeremiah for we now live in the spirit, right? We are new creatures. Ooh, let me get this right. We are new creatures in Christ Jesus, right? So when you think of a bird, for example, think of a new bird. Or if you see an elephant, you say, that's a new elephant. You see a giraffe, that's a new giraffe. God had created a new creature, right? Through baptism and through our faith in him, faith and trust in him, we are now new creatures in Christ Jesus. New creatures, right? Sometimes we overlook that. That God sees us as something brand new, right? It's almost like taking a tree, like we see all these trees surrounding us today. Can you imagine God creating a different tree each and every time someone confesses that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? They are a new creature in Christ. Amen. Right? If God can have a conversation with Jeremiah about delivering his people, right? Jeremiah stood alone, and he will deliver you as well. He will do the same for you, who's in this destruction, whose God is their appetite, and whose glory is in their shame, who set their minds on earthly things, Philippians 3.19. So our final verse, verse 5, For you are my hope, O Lord God, thou art my trust from my youth. As I stated, this old man now who was once young, maybe would go to the temple and sacrifice a perfect sheep, maybe a perfect oxen, depending on his wealth at the time. And what has happened now is he has returned or is returning back to Jerusalem. And now and he's praying and there's, there's tears coming down his eyes and he's saying, Lord, will you continue to protect the youth, these new babies that are now brought back to Jerusalem, will you continue to have the same love and protection on them and let them not be far from you and let their faces not far from you and from your friends. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for Psalm 71 today, verses 1 through 5, for it is just a reminder of who you are, that you are a loving God, that you are a creating, create, uh, creating God and that you are one that protects us at all times. For you are one that is with us in our youth, and even as we get older, that your love and protection never fails. For it is as we get older that we continue to, as John anxiously awaits it, to uh, close his eyes for the very last time in this earth and be in the presence of God. Let us anxiously, as we get older, uh, find a way and find a room in our hearts to know that, you know what, I am getting older, and I can't run as fast as I used to, and I can't do a lot of things I used to do, but do know that I am about to see, see my creator for an eternity. That is something to shout about. So Lord, let us continue to be anxious about those things and not about the things of this world. And Lord, I'm going to ask this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And may God bless you and keep you on this day. And may his light continue to shine upon you.